Welcome back, Fabric Espresso, new episode about data engineering, data science, everything happening on our big data processing platform, Microsoft Fabric. Today we have a special guest who joined us a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, Santos, part of the engineering product group. Again, I want to give you a stage and ask to introduce yourself because I want to be sure that, again, there are some people who are watching us for the very first time and also they, they should know you. Stage just. Thank you, Esra, and thanks for having me again. Super excited to be on this show and share more updates. I'm Santosh, I'm part of the Fabric Data Engineering team. I lead the Spark Compute and Enterprise Platform capabilities. Super excited to uh, share some updates and uh, new features that we've enabled recently uh, as part of Fabric. Awesome. And today we are going to discuss optimistic job admission for Fabric Apache Spark. Could you tell us more? What is this feature about? What's the context? To introduce this feature, I'll actually say this. Uh, this was one of the most asked features, not just for Fabric. Uh, it was uh, it was very interesting to hear from existing Synapse customers, existing Spark users. In Spark, being a big data workload, Spark processes tend to be greedy, as in they quickly scale up and scale down as part of a job execution flow. What usually happens is in big data workloads to make sure that job scale up is not hindered by any other factors. Workloads reserves a Spark recourse. So say for example, starting a job, the job could start with its min node configuration. It could scale up to its max nodes at any point in time. And that's going to be like continuous. It's going to scale up first in the first minute and could scale down in the fifth minute again, scale back up. What happens is, not all jobs tend to be scaling up to the maximum core requirements. In simple words, there's a lot of underutilization that happens based on the compute configuration and the actual number of cores that's being utilized. And this is something that customers constantly complain about. And it, it takes them so many tries to understand the job trends uh, and rightly size their compute. So that they don't run into any computer underutilization. With optimistic Java machine, what happens is, uh, let's take an example, right? So we're using a fabric capacity that's F32. So with F32, one CU translates to two Spark V cores in fabric, and uh, you also get bursting. So a total number of available cores becomes uh, 64 times three. You have like close to 192 Spark V cores. That's available as a Spark compute limit. Now you submit a, and say I have a workspace that's with the default configuration. I've not done any changes to my compute. In this case, it's using a startup pool that comes with a, a medium node. It starts with one node. It has a max node set to eight. Now I start my uh, first node. What used to happen in the compute reserve mode is the total cores, 64 cores, will be reserved for the job. But in this case, what happens is, as you can see, we only use or grant eight Spark V cores because it's starting in its mid node configuration. We just have like one single node currently functioning, right? The second job comes in, it's coming in the same configuration, then eight more cores get taken away. Available cores becomes 176. The third node book comes in, 168, and the fourth node book comes in. Now, before optimistic job permission was enabled, customers could only run close to three jobs or like they would be able to run uh, only till concurrently because um, these jobs are going to be reserving the cores. Uh, but in this case, what this has opened up is it allows customers to run almost close to like 24 jobs. In the case of F64 SKU, it gives you a total of three 84 Spark V cores. And uh, say with the same approach, they will be able to run close to 48 jobs concurrently without any of the jobs being queued or starving for resources, right? So that's the whole feature. Uh, it's all about uh, giving the maximum compute utilization possible and managing everything in the background for the customer so that they don't have to like worry about setting up their compute in the right way or um, uh, worrying about resource allocation or underutilization of compute that happens during the Spark job execution. I love it. It's a pure example how to do more with less, with less caring of optimization because Fabrics is a SaaS. It's a platform, 
it's out of the box. Again, a great example is optimized. Hardware is optimized. The job submission is optimized. Uh, you use one term. I would love everyone get the definition for job starvation. What is it about in the context of Apache Spark? That's a very valid question. So um, say uh, in a typical enterprise scenario, Fabric is focused on supporting multiple workloads. And uh, even in Spark jobs, you could have like multiple data engineers, data scientists using a single capacity uh, in a team. In these cases, what would happen is, I say, Esther, you're submitting a job and your job is using 64 Spark records. Say we only have like 100 Spark records available. If I'm submitting the next job, that's also size of the same 64 Spark records, what's gonna happen is it's not gonna run, it's not gonna get admitted. Even though my job could basically run with just 12 cores or 16 cores, it's not gonna be able to run in this case because of the compute reservation. So what happens is my job is either queued or throttled. Uh, I would have to constantly uh, wait uh, and check, oh, is the job complete so that I could submit another one. And this has been a standard practice if you see in, during high traffic hours or uh, the uh, active development hours uh, in a data engineering or a data science team, uh, where users try to like see, okay, oh my God, my jobs are getting queued. How do I efficiently manage or how do I make sure that the important jobs don't run into this uh, scenario where they don't get cores and they have time? Thanks for clarification. Now, job starvation is, I think that's clear for everyone. I would like to ask, for a job scale up, meaning that again, once I have a workspace in a fabric, by default, I do not have to provision any cluster, any compute capabilities. By default, I'm getting a cluster with M size machines and auto scale for nodes, which are doing the jobs, so executing the Spark jobs, are set from two to eight, something like that. Could you explain how it's working that, again, sometimes I can have one node and again, it will scale up, up to the limit, or sky is the limit, but then up to the limit that I will define. How it's working? For sure, yes. And in this case, the job scale up scenario is much more different with the optimistic job admission, right? Nothing the user has to manage. It's going to be, as you mentioned, if they're enabling auto scale, uh, it's going to be all managed by the system for them. So say you're submitting a job and you're using the default compute, as you mentioned. It's starting with single node. And as you know, Spark process is, is broken down into like different tasks and stages, right? A specific task based on increase in data volume, it could require a scale up scenario. So what happens is Spark session gets acquired, you start running the job, it starts with one node. Now the Spark runtime has found a particular uh, stage in its data processing flow. And in this case, it feels that, hey, I don't think I can run with uh, one node, I would need to add an extra executor. In that case, what happens to Spark auto scale a request for a increase in total number of cores for the job. So it could acquire a new executor and it could parallelize the task on uh, these uh, machines, right? In this case, what happens, uh, the Spark admission actually gets a request. The Spark admission layer checks if the compute uh, or like the capacity that's available has the cores that's av available for it based on the request limit. If the request and the cores are available, the request gets approved. In this case, the job gets to grow. The compute is going to be increased, so the total number of cores gets adjusted based on it. Now, in scenarios where the job scale up goes beyond the max allowed limit, in those cases, the job scale up requests are rejected at that point in time. The jobs will be able to continue to run with their current configuration, but they will only be able to scale up as the course becomes available. Santosh, that's awesome. You convinced me I want to use it. I want to enable it. I want to get the optimistic job admission. I want to leverage job scale up mechanism. How can I do that? How can I control it? Again, knowing that we have different levels of control for tenants, for capacities, for workspace. So um, <laughs> I made this easy for you. Uh, optimistic job admission is uh, enabled by default for your capacity and also for all the workspaces attached to the capacity. So you have a data engineering job that's running uh, in your fabric workspace attached to the capacity, then uh, you will already be using uh, optimistic job admission. It's enabled by default. Uh, and in scenarios where um, enterprise users 
want to make sure that they have course reserved for a job. It could be for any number of reasons. It could be because they uh, want to dedicate a uh, certain number of course to a job and they just want to make sure that the job always has these course. It's not going to be shared across other jobs that are running in the in the workspace. Then we basically to go back to a compute reserved model of execution, uh, maybe to meet their uh, very strict SLA or multiple reasons in terms of like uh, capacity or workspaces being shared across teams uh, or workspaces being shared, etc. Uh, in those cases, this is a setting or a control that uh, will be enabled or will be available for users uh, in the uh, coming month. So users can navigate to the data engineering and Spark settings as part of the workspace settings page. They will see a new section called jobs. Enabling this, they'll see uh, an option where to enable and this will basically say reserve maximum course for active Spark jobs. So by enabling this, what happens is you switch back to the computer reservation mode, you disable optimistic job push. That's it. And uh, turning this off is going to give them an uh, optimistic job. It's possible. So now let's do an exercise, a simulation. So I'm part of the team, let's say 10 data engineers. We all love Apache Spark. We all love Fabric. That's why we use it. Then all of us are scheduling a job in similar time. Again, it varies from a second to two. Again, at the end, let's assume that it's the same time. And uh, all of us are using four different notebooks, so scheduling at least four jobs at the same time. What will happen with that uh, functionality? Now, again, let's assume I enable it. So mm -hmm. the question is how the concurrency works for my team, for me. Got it. So let's go through this scenario, right? In the case of compute reservation mode, uh, say you have disabled optimistic job mission. Then what will happen is, in terms of concurrent job execution, say you're running two notebook jobs, you've set the max nodes to eight, and uh, so your total course that's going to be reserved for the job, is going to be 64 cores. I'm running notebook three, and I would also get eight nodes as my max compute configuration, and I have total course 64, that's always reserved. Now what happens is total available course becomes zero, because you've already hit the 192 limit, for F32 in terms of Spark limits. And then uh, if I submit another job, then it actually gets throttled. In this case, if it's an interactive job, it is going to be rejected. If it is going to be a, a, a notebook job that's triggered by an API or a pipeline or uh, it's a batch job, then it's going to be added to the queue and it's going to be processed uh, automatically. But it's not going to run concurrently, right? Because in this case, you have this computer reservation. In the cases, where, say, for example, we do the same, but we enable the optimistic job function. Now, what would happen is, say, you have the first notebook, it has scaled up in terms of compute. It is running with optimistic job version, but the job has grown and it has increased to eight nodes. So it is actually at its max utilization, it's using 64 response features. Your second notebook is also running at its max configuration. Third notebook is for me. And what I've done, I've become more, I want my job to run faster. Maybe it's using uh, a larger input data stream or I want it to run uh, just with larger nodes, a large number of executives. So I've set my max nodes to 10. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, if you see the difference, in this case, uh, the total number of cores that we would need across all these jobs at its max scaled out configuration exceeds the total course available. So in this case, what happens is, uh, say I am requesting for course, we are already at capacity when my notebook is executing at eight nodes. Now, what my notebook does, it becomes even more video. And it says, hey, the admin has set it to max of 10 nodes. Can I get two more? So I can uh, add two more executors and I can execute uh, much more fast. In this case, the job scale of request gets rejected. The rejection is point in time. It is going to be till uh, the course free up from either of your notebooks. Say your first notebook uh, completes or scales down, your notebook two completes or scales down, or even my notebook that I'm running, um, it, it would have crossed the stage where it, have, it would have requested the scale up. Uh, so as the notebooks or like Spark jobs execute, they would come into this scenario where they would 
require a job scale up and then um, those requests are going to be honored or like approved or rejected based on the available capacity and if they're not they will continue to run without any errors they are going to continuously progress uh, in terms of the job state uh, stages as part of their execution and as these cores get freed up they're going to be assigned or allocated towards these uh, incoming scale up requests so users don't have to do anything uh, from their side to manage the cores allocation or like during scale up scenarios or even concurrent job execution scenarios. all they would have to do is uh, they could set up the compute configurations at the workspace level or at the environment level or at the session level and once they have it optimistic job mission on the background handles all of the scale up and distribution of cores and uh, based on the total cores available at the capacity in a fair based manner I want to recall one case, one situation that has proven that optimistic job admission works and concurrency works. So again, a few months ago in uh, Vegas, we had the first edition of Fabcon, the conference fully committed and focused on Microsoft Fabric. We are going to have a European edition in a few months in September in Sweden. And again, uh, the first day or the day before the conference is kicked off, there are workshops. And in Vegas, I was leading the workshop titled Build Your First End-to-End Lakehouse Solution again, with Microsoft Public. And the room full of 200 people, so 200 data engineers who are scheduling at the same times at the maximum four Apache Spark jobs. They were able to complete all the exercises. One of the reasons was thanks to optimistic job admission. So the real life case, when we tested it, that, uh, yeah, everyone can just schedule a job and don't think about monitoring. Once there are resources, the job will be executed. So thanks for bringing that functionality. No, and uh, thanks thanks for recalling that. That was a, a very uh, good learning experience. And uh, thanks for piloting the feature at scale. Uh, uh, and uh, making sure that it addresses uh, a high traffic scenario, just like what you mentioned. The lab was pretty intensive, and uh, I'm super, super glad uh, that uh, users were able to run all of the jobs without any hindrance or like uh, throttling errors uh, seamlessly during your uh, session. So, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, so for those who are watching us, remember to leave the like button, leave a comment, reach out to us directly. We are leaving our social media channels in the description of this episode. Just text us directly with the suggestion for the improvement for the next episodes. At the same time, I want to leave, as always, the ideas.fabric.microsoft.com website. If you got the ideas to improve Fabric, just go there, share we are reviewing them on a daily basis and we are making sure that those ideas are, if valid, are part of our roadmap for our features and uh, data engineering and data science as part of Microsoft Fabric. So thanks a lot for uh, joining today, for watching. Remember, and also I encourage you to check the Fabcon in Europe end of September. We are going to also lead the workshops together with Santos related to building your first end-to-end lakehouse-based solution so we can test and you can test the optimistic <laughs> job admission on your own. Thanks for watching and until the next time, happy just scheduling Apache Spark jobs on the scale. Thanks a lot. Thank you.